they are the ones who are uh, groomed for success. Why? Because <coughs> it's in their well, self-interest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the WVOM Morning Show, and I'm back. It's your, Maze, your man, Maze Jackson. Uh, Todd, thanks for holding it down. Uh, did you catch me on Fox 32? Actually, I was working. <laughs> <laughs> I had work to do. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Ty. I think that I think that's one of the things that we have to deal with is our self interest. I think white folks groom their people because it works for them, hmm. right? It's like it's like they groom their children and prepare their children and their their next generation for success to continue a legacy. I don't know if we understand legacy, and I don't think we've really had a black continuum. Right? It's like stop, start, stop, start, stop, mm-hmm. start, stop, start, stop, start. I think they get the the value of continuance. It's like when we ask the question, why do our black elected officials feel like they have to die in office? Think about this. They start theirs at 12 and then quit, I mean at 25, and they're out by 60. We're getting in at right. 50. And so you get in at 50 because our premise is wait your turn, wait your time, wait your turn. Um, And the the challenge is everybody doesn't want to wait their time, but they also haven't been trained. So they go out and they get massacred because there's no pipeline. And we have not established that. And it's why and we can. And you're right. My dad was in the 60s. I can't remember if he was like 62 or something like that when he, he won. Right. Yeah. And think about the think about you don't even think like you're qualified. Real, like, if you're black and you subscribe to the process, you don't even think you're ready until you're some 50, 60. Like, they, think, about, think about a black person at Pete Buttigieg's age. Think about even Barack Obama. People being like, man, you ain't, gonna, you ain't ready. I, I, I think that... You know, before you said, they gave me hell when I was running. And part of it was, well, you know, you're so inexperienced, you know, you haven't done anything. Well, you know, I'd been a state rep for nine years, and I'd been uh, the alderman for pert near five years, and had been an investment banker. And I was 42, and the guy who was going to run for president, like, two years, uh, in the next two years, was like a year and a half older than me. (laughs) But, But I wasn't from that space where they was like, well, you're all right. I was from... A space, uh, you know, a true, as I say, a true black neighborhood that they couldn't see me as a leader. Hmm. So, Todd, you know, I was thinking, you know, right now the Democrats are positioning themselves that uh, since Iowa has stumbled here in in uh, in the in the country, uh, JB and quite a few elected officials are now positioning Illinois to be the place for uh, the next for for. Um, they want to position Illinois as the the new first state. That is the. Do we change the date? Yeah. Well, they want to change the date of our election and say replace Iowa as the first state because Illinois is the most representative of the Democratic Party. I can I can I can see that. Yeah, we probably are as, as Democrat as you can get. But hasn't the the fight that Iowa and Vermont always make is that they are small, uh, so they need to be out in front. Uh, I think that they blew that when they blew it. Right, I think we we talk about those old um, paradigms, but here's the thing I was gonna say because you know I saw in all of the press and I saw um, I saw J. B. Pritzker and his team suggesting that Illinois is want to be the first place. Now I think that has to do more than I think it has some selfish intent, oh, which yeah. is that they want to make it the first state dominate, and then when Trump is reelected that JB has a heads up. Remember Illinois did this once before for Barack Obama. We moved our primary up so that we could help get him over the top. Here's what I was just going to say though, Todd. I think the Democratic Party of Illinois, before they try and say that they're representative of of Democrats, I think they should think about how they've done black people in this state. Hmm. No, seriously. So you think about this email that I was reading before we went out of break, right? Yes. And you think about our governor saying that um, he found the least offensive black person. I'm not even on triple. Then you think about everybody got a case right now or is under investigation for a case, right? Right. Black, this is the worst state, even as we talk about everything else, this is the worst state for black people in the country. And here's what they're going to do. 
What they're going to do, Todd, is they're going to run around and put. And we are the democratic. T we are the repres. We are probably the most democratic state. But how you know how they say you can judge a person by not how they treat the best of them, but the least of them. Correct. Think about how black people get treated by the Democratic Party of Illinois. Think about how we get treated by the Cook County Democratic Party. Think about how black people suffer in this state. Think about we just had Alden Laurie on and he talked to us about racial inequities driving the le us leaving. And at the same time, right, they're going to come around and they're going to pound their chest and talk about how great Illinois is for a democratic state. And it is because they can count on our votes without us having not one thing to say. And so... I'm just suggesting that before y'all allow them, because I know, can I tell you what, if Illinois became the first state, do you know how much money we would make? Because think about all the ads, all the oh, outreach, oh, all the, change. but again. Because nobody if, pays attention to us when we're that far back. Right, nobody pay, but on top of it, if it's the first state, it's where everybody spends, all the presidential candidates Every spend day. all their time here trying to court and woo us. But even at that... I think Bloomberg would have spent money here. If we he's spending country. crazy money here now. No, I mean, if, if, instead of skipping Ohio, yeah. if it had been in Illinois, he'd have, he'd have come. He'd but have here, here, the here's the challenge, though. The last time we had a gubernatorial race and over $300 million was spent, they cannot demonstrate how black people got a million of it. So I'm not excited oh, about... No, we never get that. Well, so, so my thing is, I'm not excited to make more white people re-rich. Right. Right? So here's what they're going to do. They're going to tell you, they're going to tell you, Illinois should be the state. We are the example of what it's like. I don't know if they really want to sell that story. I mean, seriously, this is like really the worst state for black people. No, no, you're right. We have uh, we've never really had any money go through the black uh, the black wards, you know. But the only time is when there's some millionaire and you know he's working with some person. Well, he found one or two groups. He found a group yeah. of pastors. Somebody get we saw it in we you saw it in the last set of D twos in the governor's race. But it, it's not a, a thing where you hire a big uh, firm. Or big firms or small firms and help them grow. Right. Right? Hey, we had a question at the Frogs meeting. Oh, God. <laughs> Frogs meeting. Wait a minute. The question was do we need, or I need probably some word, do we have to have a black messiah? We don't. To, we have it. To do well? No, and we haven't. Exactly. And we, we haven't had a black messiah. Oh, oh, oh. We haven't, and I mean, maybe we do. Maybe we, because see, here's the thing. We need, a, I don't need, we need a black messiah, but we need a tip of the spear. We need somebody who ain't scared. We need somebody who will say that when the mayor stands up and calls you a homophobe for asking about your people, that is not scared to stand back up and say, it ain't got nothing to do with that. We need somebody who's not a pot. And everybody else will get behind him and say, shoot him. <laughs> yeah, but do we need, so do we need a group of people to find that person? And as they say, you know, sometimes you are shoved into greatness. And shove them into greatness. Um, I think that we gotta. We it can, it's can, so the the old man always says it can't be one, cause if it's one, then they shoot that one, and then everybody runs around. So it's gotta be people, cause if you're looking at it from a distance. Well, when I say a group, I I, I mean a diverse group. So yeah, it would be elected officials, business people. Yeah, but that. the fact the fact the problem is people have to recognize that we're equals in our spaces. See, yeah. the elected officials think that they're royalty. They think that they're better than everybody. So they think like, well, I got to talk to you. Right? They think like, how dare you think you have a say in your community? I'm the elected official. The preachers think that well, they're royalty. Says that it can't be everybody. I mean, everybody's not going to be behind you. You just need the right people. Okay. Well, we got to find who that person is. You say I got to go now? Dang it, Nabbit. Wednesdays. You know what? But it's all right, because if it wasn't for... Uh, aerial capital management. You know what I'm saying? So ain't nobody tripping. Shout out to aerial capital. <laughs> Shout out to aerial capital. You know, we got to get out of here because we get out of here early. Hey, on guess Wednesdays. who was on the uh, water reclamation board? Who? John Rogers' father. Ah, really? No. Was he? Okay, yeah. that's good to know. All right, well, if it was left up to these white people, he wouldn't have been there neither. Hey, y'all. So, for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Miss Sonia Escobar, the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, for my co host, Ty Stroger, thanks for holding it down. I'm your host, Maze Jackson, every day asking the question, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. Maze said, we out of here. Peace.
Live from the WVON newsroom, here's our. Uh, this does have a touch screen, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. When it blow up on your ass. <laughs> Better be Did y'all miss me when I was gone? Y'all don't be missing me when I'm gone. Well, they probably were, were watching you or not listening to me. <laughs> All right, y'all, we have good peace.